scholarship yeah, from the University of Minnesota. And she will discuss the effect of the 1998 economic crisis um, to childhood cognitive uh, development. So usually it's about 40 minutes, 45 minutes of presentation, and then the rest of the time you can have Q&A and discussion. Um, so I was a lecturer, so usually I have to stand to present. So um, shall I present it in Bahasa or can you? Yeah, Bahasa boleh. Bahasa boleh. Yeah. Campur uh, boleh. Campur boleh. Okay. Bahasa Indonesia. Jadi uh, terima kasih sebelumnya. Uh, terima kasih sudah uh, datang pagi-pagi. Uh, hari ini saya akan mempresentasikan salah satu uh, chapter dari disertasi saya, yaitu mengenai uh, economic crisis and early childhood development di Indonesia. Uh, wah, dulu sudah mulai campur. <laughs> uh, jadi, uh, can we have that? Sorry. Uh, jadi sedikit background yang mungkin kita semua juga udah uh, mengetahui bahwa pada tahun 1997 Indonesia mengalami krisis ekonomi yang cukup uh, berat uh, sehingga uh, ekonomi itu uh, mengalami kontraksi sebanyak 14% uh, kemudian uh, dikarenakan oleh dikarenakan oleh ekonomi uh, ekonomi I think I should choose one language it's confusing Bahasa saja uh, it's confusing Okay, can I just okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so the national poverty rate increased by around 33% uh, from the initial rate of around 15% in 1997, uh, and the crisis also made uh, the inflation rose to 78%. Uh, there have been a lot of research examining the impact of the crisis on. Uh, several outcomes, including child health. However, uh, for the child health, uh, the research in general finds conflicting results uh, on the impacts of the crisis on child health outcome, such as weight for age or height for age. So next. So this study is basically uh, motivated by several literature uh, that says that early childhood development in general have long lasting impact uh, to adulthood. And in particular, there's a, uh, there uh, in re, in uh, in several in the past decades, uh, there have been more and more studies showing that there may be sensitive periods of uh, childhood development uh, that some types of skill may be developed at a certain uh, at certain age. Uh, so, in order uh, for that uh, to develop, there may be like sensitive periods for the child development. So uh, research also shows that macroeconomic shocks uh, may have uh, some negative impacts on this childhood development. Uh, next. Um, so basically, uh, so the research examining the impact of crisis on child health is still inconclusive. There have been some that says like it has negative effect, some that say it has uh, no effect. Uh, and there have been very few studies uh, examining the impact of crisis on medium-term impacts. Uh, one of such studies is by Hidrobo, which is like I use heavily for this study, uh, specifically for Indonesia, uh, because there's like very limited uh, source of data for cognitive skills. There have been very limited studies on, uh, on child cognitive behavior. Um, so one example is studied by Chung, how, uh, it used the same data that I'm using, however, uh, it generally ignores the impact of the crisis on the child cognitive behavior. Any questions so far? Uh, can I have next? So the research objective of this study is quite simple. It's basically to estimate the causal impact of the 1997 Asian financial crisis to uh, the, uh, to uh, children's cognitive uh, development. Uh, while I, why I emphasize the causal impact because what I'm trying to see here is not only correlation, but also the causal impact. Uh, next. So the way I'm using this, the way I do this is by uh, exploiting the panel data nature of the IFLS. And so basically I'm using all three IFLS data from 97 until 
team. And then uh, the reason why I'm using IFLS, IFLS is one of the data uh, that has like cognitive skills that have questions on cognitive behavior uh, of children. So they started asking that question from uh, the second IFLS in 1997. Uh, so that's why I started using uh, the data from 1997. So basically the way they ask it, they have like 70 questions in the questionnaires. And some of the questions is on basic cognitive skills and five questions on basic math skills. Am I too fast, too slow? Okay, okay. And because uh, the focus of this research is on early childhood development, and when we talk about early childhood development, usually we talk around like zero until five years old. So the focus, um, so the focus of this uh, study is on, on children where zero until five years old in 1997. So at the time of the crisis, because I want to see the impact of the crisis on the early child development. So the children needs to be between this age range during the crisis. So it, what it means that in 2007, they will be around uh, between like, 10 to 15 years old. So the sample includes, uh, so, the reason why I'm using 7 to 14 years old is because the IFLS only asks cognitive skills question to children aged 7 to 14 years old. And until I think 2014, they started asking different cognitive uh, skills question to above 14 years old. So that's why I have to limit the study only to 7 to 14 years old because that's the data that I have. And uh, in particular for this study, I'm also using a house questions on weeks of pregnancy because I want to see what is the impact of exposure to crisis while the children were in utero uh, and whether it has any impact on their cognitive development. Uh, next. So the challenge of uh, identification for, uh, the challenge of identification for this study is uh, to determine uh, the length of the crisis itself. Because if you want to see like the length of exposure to the crisis, then you need to agree like what are the, uh, what are the period of the crisis. So the crisis period, uh, here I use like two sources uh, to determine uh, the length of the crisis. The first is I'm using data, this is like from World Development Indicators. Uh, so basically, I look at three uh, different variables, which is growth, in inflation, and food price index. And as we can see, like from like the third quarter, from the fourth quarter of 1997, the growth is like going down very, very low, and then the food price is going very, very high. And this is um, the reason why I'm focusing on this because research on the crisis in general says that the impact of the crisis mostly fell through the increases in prices. So that's why I'm using prices data to determine like, the period of the crisis. Uh, besides the data, the literature in general agrees that the crisis period is between August 1997 until December 1999. So that's what I'm using as the period of the crisis. Uh, okay. Um, mother M at time T, whose age at that time is A. Okay. So, but the identification, our variable of interest is LT, which is like the length of exposure that the child, uh, that the child has to the crisis. This includes months uh, when the, uh, the child was in mother's womb, basically. And uh, one of the identification challenges is to separate between uh, the impacts from secular time trend. Because as we know, like medicine and technology improves over time. 
so an apparent so the ben like younger children will benefit more from the improvement in the medicine and technology. So like uh, an apparent worse outcome in the older children did not necessarily mean that it was because of the crisis, but it, it's because like um, the younger child has better access to medicine and technology compared to the older child. So that was like one of the challenge of uh, this uh, the child of identification. So the way uh, I go about it is by including what I call as birth plan. So basically, it's trying to separate, it's trying to include the secular time track into the specification. And then I make it to be able to vary based on the location, which is why I have the interaction with the province. Uh, with the, with the province. And then uh, I have like the usual control variable, which is X. And then uh, I have mother fix effect. And the reason why uh, I have mother fix effect is I want to control for time invariant household and community characteristics. Uh, so, and then the rest is like as in the same. So, how do I identify this as it? Remember, I'm trying to see like the causal impact. So, the way I do this is by Oh, yeah, okay. So the way I do this is by uh, comparing siblings' differences. So what I'm trying to compare is like, uh, is the gap between siblings? If there is no crisis, I'm assuming that the gap of cognitive skills between siblings of a certain age gap should be the same. Okay, 
Is that clear enough? Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes. So in IFLS 1997, you can identify if mother's pregnant yes. and then identify the child of that mother in IFLS yes. 2007. Yes, because uh, so basically <coughs> the reason why I can do this is because I have panel data. So basically I can track the children from their pregnancy up to their 7 until 14 years old. So basically, the <coughs> data nature of the IFLS is like essential for this identification because we want to see the sibling uh, differences. Okay. Remember that I said that this identification basically assuming that in the absence of crisis, then the differences between sibling of the same age gap should be the same across household. This will hold if we. This will hold if we have a linear trend of early childhood development. What do I mean by that? It means that in general, the early childhood development have like um, there's no jump in uh, in the development between zero and five years old. There's nothing that something happened at four year old then uh, suddenly there's a change. So. How I examine that assumption, because that assumption is quite critical, is by, uh, by examining uh, data on uh, several uh, childhood outcomes. Uh, so I use two variables because it's quite hard to get the data for this. The first one is like infant, infant mortality rate. So basically, as long as this is linear, then our identifying assumption should hold. And then the next one that I use is um, the prevalence of underweight. So this is like for age. Okay. No question? Uh, next. So if uh, I if uh, we remember from the from the background, uh, one of the purpose of this study is to see whether there's like a sensitive period in the development of uh, early childhood. So the previous equation basically assuming that the development uh, is the same in all the period of uh, early, in all the period of childhood development. However, if we want to see the sensitive period, then we have to use like a more flexible form. So we can examine whether there are sensitive periods. So that's why uh, the L is now divided into several several variables. The first one is like, if the lack of exposure to the crisis when the child is in uh, utero, then length of time exposed and, uh, to the crisis when a child was between 0 until 11 months age, and so on and so forth until about 35. Because uh, I focus about 35 is around like 3 years old, 3 and a half, 4. So I focus more on, uh, so I lump everything about like three years old as like one period. So the summary statistics, I'll just explain it very, very quickly. Um, I'll just explain it very, very quickly. So this is just to give you an idea of like the data. So in column one, it's basically all children age uh, seven to 14 in 2007 and 2014. As we can see, for example, here, there are around 14,555 children. However, around 5,000 of them doesn't, uh, don't have siblings, and the rest have siblings. So if we focus on this one, this is basically our We are still using this, because this is like sort of like our control variable. Uh, but uh, this is like our main children because they are the one who have siblings. And as we can see, I won't talk much about this, but I just want to uh, say that the, so these are the three scores that I'm using for uh, the outcome variables, which is total score, which is a combination of basic cognitive score and math score. And all are standardized by the mean and standard deviation of the 2014 data. So that's what it means by standardized. So in order to make it comparable across time. 
Okay, next. So let's talk about the one star, which is like the results. So as we can see, uh, so this is like the main estimation results using the first equation. Uh, as we can see, uh, I don't put, uh, I don't present the control variables because the table will be too full. So I'm just uh, presenting only the variable of interest, which is months exposed to crisis. So as we can see that the, the main estimation result shows that there is a negative impact of the crisis on the total score and max score. However, uh, it's statistically insignificant on two basic, basic cognitive uh, score. And if we separate between urban and rural, we can see uh, this is consistent with uh, most of the research on the impact of crisis on child health, that most of the impact are borne by the children in urban area. Okay. So what does it mean that this is like negative 0 0.0110? So it means that if a child is exposed for the full length of the crisis, which is around 38 months, it means that uh, his, uh, his or her cognitive score will be reduced by around 30, uh, 0.58 standard deviation, which is quite huge uh, for a number. And and it's even bigger if uh, we're considering only math score. So next. So I'm what I'm trying to do here is to see, remember, uh, I want to see like, whether there are sensitive periods. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm, limit, I'm limiting the L only, I'm considering only the exposure after birth. <coughs> so as you can see, when we use only exposure after birth, exposure to the crisis, when we only count that as an exposure to the crisis, the impact is basically negligible, except for math score is still like negative. Uh, and when we disaggregate it by urban and rural, basically nothing are significant. So what does it mean? It means that this is like sort of like implicit, uh, implicit evidence that maybe the impact of the crisis more uh, like the negative impact of the crisis mostly happen if the child is exposed while uh, she was uh, while she was in uh, in utero. So in order to in order to see whether that implicit evidence is supported by the data, so that's where the flexible form comes in. So next, and the result is this. And as we can see, the result is basically supported our. Uh, supported the implicit evidence before. It's, it shows that most of negative impact happen if the child is exposed to the crisis while she was, he or she was in utero. So as we can see, the impact is quite big. It's like minus 0 0.047 for total score, and then uh, the impact one. But now uh, the basic cognitive score, uh, there's a negative impact on basic cognitive score. If, uh, we remember before there was no impact on cognitive score, basic cognitive score. Now it has negative impact on basic cognitive score. Again, this impact is quite huge. So what does it mean that, um, for example, this 0 0.047? So if the child is exposed for nine months, uh, if the child is exposed during like uh, when she or he was in utero, she, she was exposed for the full uh, cycle of the pregnancy, it means that the, it means that his, his or her total score will be reduced by that much, which is again quite, quite huge. So and then if we disaggregate it uh, by urban and rural, As we can see, it still provides a consistent story that uh, most of the negative impact was felt by the children in <coughs> urban area. So it shows that, so far it shows that the evidence seems to appear that um, the impact of the crisis on childhood uh, cognitive development in general is negative, especially if the child is exposed uh, when she was uh, during pregnancy. Uh, next, and this is just this is just a robustness check. Uh, so all previous estimation, I used Bergman cohort as a cluster. 
for standard errors. So this is just like some robustness check. So I use like a village level cluster, and as you can see, it sort of like lose some of the power. However, the total score and max score are consistently still negative. So it seems that the results for the total score and max score are quite robust. Uh, either you use different type of cluster. Is it okay to go back to the previous slide? Oh, yes. So it says all of the burden of the negative impacts of the crisis were born by children living in urban areas. Is that a surprise to you? Uh, no. It's actually quite consistent with uh, most of the research on Indonesian uh, financial crisis because because the way the crisis work, it increases the prices of uh, of uh, of goods and services, of goods in general, especially nutrition. Uh, so, if it worked that way in rural area, if mo most of them probably produce their own food, so they can be insulated from uh, from the crisis, because uh, most of the negative impact of the crisis works through prices. If they can insulate themselves from the impact on the prices, then yeah. Okay. Any, any other question? Next. Okay, I think we uh, can go next. And this is only because uh, before I used the data, all the data, basically between zero until five years old, I include all the children. Now, if I limit only on the very sensitive period of childhood development, then it will be between zero until three years old. So this is basically the result when we will limit uh, the sample only to uh, children aged zero until three years old, and the results are basically relatively consistent. We, get, we still see a negative impact on total score, and then when we use a flexible form, like still negative impact uh, mostly happen, uh, uh, if uh, the child is uh, exposed to the crisis while she or he was in utero. And next, lastly, this is not exactly a robustness check. Uh, this is more like extension. Uh, as I said before, most of the impact were borne by the children in urban area. So there's no negative impact on children in rural area. What I'm trying to see here is just whether a household that that is like us. even though they live in rural areas, some also are farming, some not. So what I and the story is still consistent with the uh, the story in urban areas. So basically, those that were not impacted by the crisis are those that have access to food that they can produce uh, food themselves. But those who did not have access to food, they still have. Uh, they still get some negative impact on of the crisis to the children, uh, especially when we use the flexible form. When we use uh, the non-flexible form, we don't see anything, right? So this is just to see like a more fine grain of like what is happening in the data. Okay, and uh, lastly, uh, I think I'm not really. Going to Next, uh, so in conclusion, so basically uh, what I'm trying to do here is I exploit the panel data nature of the FLS, and then the estimates are identified by comparing cognitive skills differences between siblings in the same household with cognitive skill differences of siblings in different households. However, the key is they have to have the same age gap. So main variable of interest is lack of exposure, and then uh, it seems that the crisis impact is when urban children are exposed to the crisis in utero. However, the result also provides some evidence that the impacts of the crisis on rural children can be negative if the children are from non-farming rural households. Uh, I didn't put it in the slides, but there are some caveats of this study. Uh, the most important one is that um, the results depend very much on the quality of the cognitive skills variables. So the way I felt to do this, uh, I'm not sure what kind of uh, 
what kind of measure, like, uh, because usually when we talk about cognitive skills, we use like Raven scale or things like that. However, I'm not sure what is, I think they use a combination of Raven scale and something else. Uh, so the quality of this research depends very much on that pattern. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I think we you can just uh, go ahead to go to Q&A. Um, we have plenty of time, so still have Yes. So, well, I have a lot of time. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. So when you're explaining the beta 1 of the very original results, right? You mentioned that the way to interpret it is that over 38 months, mm -hmm. you might have 0.38 change in standard, 3.38 standard deviations. Can we interpret that in terms of actually what the score is? I'm not sure if the score is out of like, is it out of percent? Are we talking about scores up from like 75? It's not down by 38%, right? That's not out of percent. So basically, it's like, uh, up, so because it's standardized, yeah. So it should be interpreted as above or below the mean. Okay. So if it's positive, it means that it increased above the mean compared to like uh, it decreases. Sorry, because right. Yeah. Yeah. So the children will have will will have their scores like reduced by that amount of below the mean. Then 0.38 times yes. standard. Yes. One, and what is one standard deviation? How much percent? Oh, I have to look at the data. Is it like more than 10%? Mm -hmm. uh, I have to look at data. I, I cannot answer that. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, that's all right. I think, I, think the mean, I think the mean of the standard uh, deviation is around 0.15. Is that in 15 percent? Yeah, around. So 0.38 of that yeah. would be something like 7 percent yeah. above the below. Yeah, I, I didn't really convert it into like percentage points. That's interesting. Okay. Um, <coughs> Uh, yang sebelumnya yang pertama, tapi saya coba saya bincang tadi 
bingung sekarang bahasa Inggris karena slide sih bahasa Inggris jadi <laughs> saya <laughs> bingung jadi uh, itu tuh di cover uh, dengan variable t jadi tujuan dari variable variable t itu adalah untuk mengajar uh, secular linear time time trend uh, mungkin uh, ini uh, slide berikutnya itu uh, saya hide mungkin bisa ditunjukin nggak yang sebelum ini ada yang hide Uh, karena uh, yang jadi uh, <laughs> I think if uh, we go back to this, it automatically. Oh, okay. Uh, kalau nggak apa deh, yang di question itu. How do you apply this? untuk uh, 
strategi antivirusnya untuk uh, identifikasi yang kita sebut sebagai identifikasi. Kalau anak yang tinggal tidak serumah juga jadi misalnya dia punya dua anak. Enggak, uh, jadi uh, ini cuma yang dihitung anak yang tinggal pada saat survei. Karena kalau misalnya kita ikutin yang masukin yang migrant, jadi ini anak yang masuk ke dalam household. Karena akhir itu kan uh, definisi rumah tangganya itu kan sangat spesifik ya. <tuh> apa, harus uh, apa sih? <tuh> harus uh, share satu penutrasi or something like that gitu. Uh, jadi apa yang masuk ke dalam uh, itu? Karena kalau dimasukkan anak yang migran itu be, uh, kebanyakan datanya itu tidak selalu ada terutama untuk kognitif uh, developmentnya karena anak yang migran itu kan nggak bisa dipas dengan skillsnya tapi kemampuan kemampuan mm -hmm. asalnya juga berubah kalau ada yeah. semakin banyak kontrol yeah. dari rumah iya yeah, memang iya yeah. tapi itu memang uh, sesuatu yang apa another kaya dari studi ini karena itu nggak bisa karena kan uh, kita perlu data cognitive skillsnya sementara anak yang migran itu kan nggak ditanya nggak dites cognitive skillsnya jadi kita nggak nggak punya datanya jadi di situ yang itu isu missing variables tapi in general <coughs> anak migrannya yang banyak itu orang tua migran sekarang anak yang migran uh, terutama untuk umur segini ya Kalau kita pikirkan uh, basis strategi, ada beberapa mm. daftar yang agak panjang lebar mm. Berapa kegiatan-kegiatan ibu hat yang kami mm. Masalah kekurangan air folate, tablets, mm. atau kekurangan protein, mm. nutrisi, dan lain-lain Apa kamu punya sejensi ide yang mana dari root causes itu kemungkinan besar yang menyebabkan? Kemungkinan besar uh, melalui nutrition mm. uh, Karena kan uh, terutama kalau kita lihat harga dari food Uh, itu uh, meningkat sangat uh, tinggi uh, dan uh, riset uh, beberapa riset juga sudah melihat bahwa in general dan mungkin uh, salah satu dugaan lainnya adalah kenapa kita melihat dampaknya mostly di uh, ada saat anak itu dalam uh, fase kehamilan atau ke ekspos pada saat fase kehamilan kemungkinan besar itu juga karena ibunya itu kalau dia punya anak yang lain uh, she might prioritize on the children that are born instead of you know the one in utero. Uh, uh, jadi uh, kalau nggak salah ada salah satu riset yang uh, bilang bahwa ada that kind of consumption smoothing. So basically parents sacrifice the consumption in order for the children uh, to have more food, uh, to have more access to food. Uh, that's probably one of the reason why we see more of the impact on the Uh, so basically, the result it seems to be consistent with the existing results. Uh, however, I think uh, what the study contributes is it's trying to estimate the total impact Oh. Uh, 
satu, yang kedua menganalisa sekarang mungkin kalau dari tujuh ribu kelas krisis tidak terlalu rendah banget, mungkin menimpa dari macam atau mungkin bisa menjadi sedikit atau sedikit ada tak dampak sekarang ini dengan krisis global ya karena kan itu mempengaruhi terhadap keluarga walaupun ada beberapa santri tapi bagi saya itu tidak mencukupi mungkin apakah bisa dimasuk sedikit atau ini sudah final Oh, uh, ini masih apa, work in progress, jadi uh, <laughs> tidak berada. <laughs> uh, tapi, uh, tapi tujuan dari studi ini kan agak spesifik. Uh, yeah. Dia ingin melihat dampak dari krisis tahun 97 mm-hmm. terhadap perkembangan kognitif anak usia ini. Mm-hmm. Uh, jadi saya pakai data 2014 sama 2007 itu bukan uh, kak, untuk melihat uh, dampak dari krisis pada tahun pada periode tersebut. Jadi untuk uh, cuma untuk uh, ibaratnya menggunakan data tersebut untuk menjawab pertanyaan uh, yang tadi. Uh, jadi tujuannya adalah mungkin uh, sedikit mungkin dari studi ini yang bisa dilihat adalah bahwa dampaknya itu apabila ada uh, shock-shock yang seperti itu dampak itu mungkin yang terbesar itu akan uh, terjadi yang mendampak itu akan ke anak itu mungkin apabila uh, shock itu terjadi pada ibu hamil uh, apa artinya secara kebijakan mungkin yang perlu dipertimbangkan adalah apabila terjadi suatu krisis atau uh, shock negatif uh, yang seperti ini yang perlu diperhatikan oleh pemerintah adalah apa kebijakan yang supaya kita bisa uh, membantu ibu hamil itu konsumsinya tetap terjaga kesehatannya tetap terjaga jadi uh, yang bisa ditarik dari sini adalah apa yang bisa kita pelajari dari dampak krisis tahun 97 yang kita bisa ambil ke kedepannya untuk merubah apa uh, supaya pada saat terjadi hal-hal seperti ini pemerintah itu mungkin bisa fokusnya itu seperti apa karena kan uh, selalu pertanyaannya adalah Sumber daya kita kan terbatas, sumber daya kita kan terbatas. Jadi mudah-mudahan hasil ini bisa membantu membantu apa sedikit sebagai policy decision making. Apa ini kalau misalnya krisis atau apa? Jadi dampak terhadap anak. Kalau berkaitan dengan MPG dan SDG, sebenarnya sudah ada banyak riset yang kalau berkaitan dengan krisis tahun 97 dia melihat berbagai uh, MG itu kan kayak misalnya stunting dan lain sebagainya uh, dan in general mereka tidak melihat uh, dampak negatif tapi uh, metodologinya mungkin waktu itu lebih ke korelasi jadi mungkin yang bisa dimata adalah untuk melihat dampaknya ke kayak misalnya half for uh, karena paper ini uh, 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 ya, uh, tapi karena paper ini apa fokusnya di cognitive development jadi saya nggak pakai itu tapi itu bisa sih sebenarnya ditambah. Uh, ada beberapa hal seperti profil demografis, apakah mm. misalnya ibunya bekerja mm. atau apakah dia perempuan kambing mm. dan sebagainya yang mungkin tidak dijelaskan di sini. Tapi apakah ada yang ditemukan gitu? Is it more likely that uh, you will have this difference if the mother is working, for example, versus mm-hmm. and, and, uh, a full-time mother? Uh, itu memang nggak menjadi fokus dari studi ini, karena fokus dari studi ini kan melihat dampak dari krisis kakak itu. Tapi itu sebenarnya uh, bisa dimasukkan ke kontrol variable-nya. Uh, tapi uh, kayak mother bekerja dan lain sebagainya, itu bisa dimasukkan ke dalam persamaan estimasi Uh, tapi interpretasinya itu akan sangat terbatas karena kita kan nggak bisa uh, karena ada persoalan-persoalan statistik seperti yang kayak itu juga di problem uh, jadi walaupun kita mau interpretasikan kalau mau spesifik untuk melihat apakah kalau ibunya bekerja itu ada perbedaannya itu uh, tidak bisa hanya cuma masukkan ke control variable karena control variable itu interpretasinya akan nampak um, uh, karena kita kan harus make sure it's so generous and so on so forth. Jawabannya adalah mungkin yes and no, tergantung uh, apa 
tetap fokus dari studi. Unfortunately, studi ini fokusnya enggak ke situ, tapi it's something doable. Maybe the next. Ada